In the last video, we discussed people in photos who look happy that had sinister backstories. Be sure to check out the first one if you haven't. And now let's start with our next set of vile photos. In this first photo, we see a man and woman at the shore of Hersoma Beach, and captured behind them the waves from the ocean. This looks like this could be the scene from a movie. The origins of this photo take place in the 1950s, and a Times Company photographer named Jack was just at his house nearby when he heard a yell that something was happening at the beach. Quickly, Jack snapped his shot, and what you see here is a man and woman whose 19-month-old wandered off unchecked, lost to the ocean. This photo is not a reenactment or a play, but a picture taken in the most gut-wrenching of times a human could possibly experience. You would think it ends here, but unfortunately it doesn't. The worst of the news is that, to no surprise, the baby would not make it. But the story doesn't end there. And that is because it became a story, but not in the way you think. Jack's photo turned this terrible event into a story on the paper and was well received by his colleagues. The story gained a lot of attention, with people praising the authenticity clutched an emotion of the man and woman together by the ocean side. Jack Gaunt, the photographer, then won the Pulitzer Prize. This is an annual award. Listen to its definition. An annual award for outstanding public service and achievement in American journalism. This award stemmed from a one-year-old being swept away by the ocean. Jack himself had a three-year-old daughter at the time. Do you recognize this photo? Perhaps a history buff or someone familiar with other videos on this channel may already have an idea or know what this photo is. All faces smiling, with a few men and mostly women. The attire of the women seen here are that of secretary or office administration clothing, while the men seem to be donning military uniform. Well, these in fact are all members of Nazi SS that worked at Auschwitz. A short distance from the cheerful faces in this photo would be the reality of innocent people having their fates ended underground by gas. In fact, the SS officer in the middle, Carl Friedrich Hawker, was responsible for much ordering of the Zyklon B, also known as the gas used at the camp. The picture does resemble how emotionless they felt towards the victims in their camps. And if you look at the photo without knowing the history, you would see a photo of what looks like happy service people. It's chilling and dark to know how comfortable they were with their work, especially taking pride in it, and those who enjoyed it. The original photos make up an album of SS together on holiday, and it is a bizarre contrast to see two different worlds so close together, yet so different. This vacation album during Auschwitz was turned in around 2007 with these photos. Hawker escaped justice for some time after the war. Eventually, he would spend seven years in prison, but he would be back out in the free world to work at a bank, among the rest of society and the families he had torn apart. There's a good chance you've seen this photo before, as it's been around for decades and has been seen for various reasons. Whether it be for comedy, or for the reality of possibilities, and I'll explain what this means for someone who doesn't know the background for this story. Also, maybe you do know what happened in this story, but not everyone knows what would happen later. In the 1970s, these two young brothers from San Diego, the McQuilkins, were outside climbing Morro Rock in California when the sky turned dark. Like many people, the brothers would continue their trek. As you may predict with the side of this photo, they were both struck by lightning. However, this photo here is just minutes before they were hit by lightning, 
As the weather changed, they realized the static causing their hair to lift was pretty humorous, so they took pictures along with their sister. It was only after these photos were taken that the brothers were struck. The McQuilkin brothers were struck by lightning in 1975, and the youngest brother seen here developed a rare pulmonary disease in 2010. Both brothers would develop this, but the youngest would sadly end his fate by his own hands. To add to this speculation whether the lightning gave them pulmonary disease or not, it is unfortunately true that it's not uncommon for those struck by lightning to sadly go on their own terms. The family still wonders if it was the lightning that caused the outcome of losing him. In this photo, we see what appears to be someone playing an instrument and a man next to him enjoying it, as if he is in a calm state of mind, enjoying the music. Bliss. Bliss. Is this really what is happening, though? To give some context, this photo takes place in Armenia, 1988. A photographer was here after an enormous earthquake shook the country, taking the existence of over 40,000 people. Armenia, for those not familiar with this country, has gone through trouble with its social judgment from the ones in power. A Christian in this country is considered second class and looked down upon. However, I'm beginning to stray from the natural disaster that had just occurred and what is going on with this photo. The man who appears carefree here is named Ishran, and he approached the photographer after he's seen him take a photo. If you look in the back of the photo, you'll see a band of fellow people with instruments who were freely playing music that evening. When Ishran approached Antoine, tears streamed down his face, and he told the photographer he looked just like his son, and extended his arms out for a hug. It was then that Ishran shared that his son had just been electrocuted by the judging people of the country. Antoine asked if he would like to dance, to which Ishran did so while others pulled rocks closer to sit around and connect in the moment. What turned into a mission for analyzing and photographing the wreckage of the earthquake came a more personal and intimate photo that bared resilience to a stronger threat within the country. This photo is of Ishran, a father dancing while mourning the loss of his son with those he felt connected to in the moment. Like and subscribe to see more of these videos. I want to thank you all for watching, and a huge thank you to my subscribers and those engaging with me as this channel grows. You can also share this video to help support it. To further support my channel, please consider visiting my Patreon link pinned in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and until next time.